What's up guys, we're doing a gear breakdown for the 2021 musky season. Uh, I guess we'll just dive right into it with rods. So this year, Cody purchased a new 10 weight. It's actually the same one that I have. Uh, it's an Echo Ion 10 weight uh, in the nine foot version. And what he'll be running with that is a Lampson Liquid Reel in the nine plus version. So it's the nine to 10 weight. Um, size. Um, for lines, he'll be running the Scientific Anglers uh, Intermediate Sync 3 and Sync 5 line, which means intermediate and then sinking at 3 inches per second and then sinking at 5 inches per second. So that 5 inches per second will be closest to the fly line. Um, and then what I'll be running again is the same exact setup as Cody. Um, 10 weight Echo Ion in the same size as real. Um, and for that rod, I will be running a two different, three different lines actually, I should say. I have the Scientific Anglers Sync 25 Cold, which I kind of played around with last year when my other line busted. Um, then I'll be running with the triple density, like Cody's, except this is gonna be a heavier line this is in the uh, sink three, sink five, sink seven. So the sink five, sink seven, sorry, is just seven inches per second. And then I'll kind of be messing around with the intermediate. Um, I messed around with this last year, but just didn't really play around with it that much. So this is kind of gonna be like my top water line or super shallow river um, line. And new for me this year is a new rod, 11 weight. This is the Wolf Rod Co. Uh, made by Dave Wolf. And this is the River Wolf 11 weight. And this is also in the same size reel as the 10 and the two tens right there. Uh, Lamps and Liquid and Gray, uh, nine to 10 a weight size. Yeah, I've uh, messed around with this a little bit. We're still about two to three, two weeks uh, out from opener. So I've just kind of been dabbling around with it. Not really doing too much with it. But overall, it's a great looking stick. Uh, I like the action on it. And I guess we'll see how uh, it works this season. So yeah, that's what I'll be running with uh, this season. And to complement that rod, I will be running another Scientific Angler line. This is like my favorite river line. Uh, sink three, sink five, sink seven, like I said earlier. Last year I had problems with these lines busting on me halfway through the summer, probably like two to three months after I bought them. I was using them pretty hard. I don't know if I just, because I left them in the truck in the heat, or because they busted, busted. So this year, kind of the make or break for Scientific Angles with me. If they hold up for, I don't know, four months, I'd be, four to five months, I'd be happy with it. But if not, we're going with something else next season. So with that, um, I guess I'll talk about kind of our leader setups this year. So, Basically, there's two to three different types of leaders. You can go fluorocarbon, wire, or monofilament. I don't mess around with monofilament. I use wire, 40 pound, real wire bite, and the coated, knottable. Um, then with lake setups and stuff, depending on where I'm at, if it's medium clarity, I will use the 40 pound butt section, and then to the wire bite, uh, if I'm in just a complete lake and it's super clear, I'll go 40 pound to then 80 pound fluoro. And this is by Cortland, so I'm gonna mess around with that this year. And if I'm on like the Wisconsin River or any other river from shore where I can't get my snag out, I do use 30 pound just cause it's enough to hold for muskies and it's good, it's a nice easy break off. So I don't completely destroy my line and whatnot. So that's what I'll be doing with this year. Um, with that, I have, I usually pre-tie a bunch of leaders cause you'll get snagged and one will kink and you'll kind of want to change up right away. Uh, with these leaders, I'm running stay locks, uh, size three or above. Uh, if you guys are all familiar with stay locks, good snap, that's what you want. Uh, kind of holding all that together. I put all my wire bites and stuff in this little box, nice and waterproof. You do not want your leaders getting wet and just sitting there. No bueno. So I keep everything in this nice little waterproof box. Um, that'll go on from that. 
Uh, stripping guards, probably, I used to not use stripping guard, but then when it's really hot out and that water just evaporates off that line, you definitely want something. These I've used for the past two years, or no, past year, I should say. Pack of three, I have an extra pack. And uh, so far, they don't hold up. I kind of use them until they're, uh, you physically cannot wear them anymore and they do no justice. So yeah, I do use these on backup. This actually saved my ass one time when I didn't have, I usually take those and put them on my pocket or my wallet sometimes if I'm on a trip. And I forgot them in my other pair of pants, so I had these in my bag. These are basically the same idea, stripping guard, but it's just a glove. I don't know, kind of uncomfortable, but it does for when, it'll do for when you're kind of in a pinch. So going from that, I guess we'll kind of go to some other tackle stuff. These are kind of some tools you want. This is for uh, clipping wire and whatnot and hooks as well. Uh, I do have a different pair of hook cutters that are on the way that are actually meant for hooks and probably a lot easier than these little things, but these are good for cutting wire and whatnot. And then I do have pliers, big set of pliers to get way down in there and get that fly out. And on occasion, I do rock with this. This will go around your waiting belt or your regular belt, but it's just some kind of nice little rod holder if you're gonna be running up and down the river by shore. Um, kind of some miscellaneous stuff. I carry around duct tape for when your rod gets stuck. That's happened before, it's happened to everyone. Do not put a pair of pliers on it. Your rod will get messed up. Um, headlamps, pretty key for, you know, late at night early in the morning type of deal. You guys know what's up. Um, and then for fly boxes. So last year, I kind of had a lot of flies and I was like, I didn't want to get the big boat box for all this money and whatnot. And they, they were selling these little things. These are actually Plano, like little pistol cases. And I just hot glued, you know, this in there and I you know, stick your flies in there, whatever, right? They're like eight bucks. So I bought four of them. Now, keeping four boxes and all of them being black, you know, I labeled them, but, you know, it's kind of annoying. So this year, what I'm planning on doing is rocking with one or two of these for my shore bag, which I'll just, you know, these fit right in the bag and it's easy. You know, I don't need 40 flies when I'm going from shore. So that's what I'll be rocking this year, as well as these big guys. These are Plano 17 inch pistol cases. They were on sale, so I bought these. Uh, I just put a bunch of stickers on them just because I, I don't get stickers, might as well put them somewhere, right? But yeah, no, I'm excited for these because these will definitely go in like a bigger trip box and I can kind of select what flies I want without bringing, you know, the whole batch. But yeah, I'll, uh, usually I kind of differentiate and separate the boxes from like Buford heads to fish skull to double nickels and vice versa. So that's kind of how I organize that. Uh, going from there, I guess for storage stuff, um, this is my real box. Cody and Hunter and I all have the same one. Again, another plain old pistol case. Um, yeah, basically, I have all my reels in here. Uh, the two that are out are obviously on my 10 and 11 weight. Um, I have my two eight weight reels, and then my, the lamps and liquids come with a, like a little case that I just keep in there for if I'm selecting a reel to go hike on, I'll grab the, you know, the certain one and whatever. Uh, pro tip, if you are gonna get this, do not cut out your reels like this. Take up too much space. Cut them out so they fit like this. So you can fit 10 or however many in a row compared to now I only have room for about two more reels. So if you are interested in this, do not uh, do what I, Cody and I did, do what Hunter did in the right way, but yeah. No, this is super nice, uh, pretty waterproof. I mean, it's fine for what it is, but I just like a hard case that I can throw around in the boat, uh, in the back of the truck, really anywhere without the reels getting scuffed and whatnot. So going on from that for with uh, bags. Sure, this is my like shore fishing bag, or I should say boat bag necessarily. You should put this on, you know, backpack, whatever. Uh, I like this because if I'm going on a hike through the woods to the spot, I can put my rod case in there and then clip that in so it's nice and secure. Uh, yeah, other than that, it's just a backpack, so you don't need anything too special. I've rocked with that for the past two years. 
Um, another little bag. This is the Cabela's bag. I like this because if I'm going on a trip, I pack basically all my extra lines in here, my pliers and whatnot, leader stuff, and fly boxes when I had those four boxes. So that was really nice. Also stripping guards and just kind of other miscellaneous stuff fishing wise. Um, yeah, another thing is this big box right here, this big tote. This is another plain old box. Uh, I actually really like this tote because I can fit uh, eight, my eight weight, 11 and 10 weight as in rod tubes, as well as with that Cabela's bag, that other backpack, and kind of some miscellaneous rain gear, all in that. You know, I throw that in my truck when we're going on a trip. There's all my fishing stuff. I don't have to worry about putting it in whatever. It's all in the tote. You can throw it around, leave it outside. Raccoons and shit won't get into it. If rain, if it rains, it all drips off. If it doesn't go in there. That's how I really like that. So we'll kind of get into the uh, the clothing aspect now. Um, this is my wading bag. I really did not know why I bought this until you're putting on waders like in a gravel parking lot and you can step on it. It's kind of nice because you do not want to poke a hole in your stocking foot waders. That's no good because gravel will get in there and poke holes. Sooner or later it will happen. Um, I do like this so I have my wading boots in here. Um, Cody and I are both running Sims Tributary waders. Uh, we've been running them for the past, I don't know, two or three seasons, something like that. But I fold them up real nice like in here. And I have frog tog boots that are cheap, I don't know, they're like 70, 80 bucks, whatever. They get the job done. Good enough, right? So next up is this stripping basket that I picked up at a fly shop. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I bought it last year, kind of when the season was ending. So I'm gonna kind of give it more of a test this year. I don't know, with sinking lines and shore fishing and current, that line gets really tangled up in the rocks. And I actually lost and missed a fish because of that. And it was a nice fish, probably about a mid forties. So. I said, screw it, we're getting a stripping basket. One lost fish is too many. So yeah, we're gonna try that this year and kind of see how that goes. But yeah, this all zips up nice and there's plenty of room for like an extra sweatshirt or like a raincoat or basically whatever else you need. So that's that. Yeah, Cody just had the different edition of the tributaries, kind of a cooler looking design on there and he's running some Cabela's wading boots. So yeah, we both like how these fit and look. Uh, we wear these uh, when the season opens and we're wading around to, uh, all the way through the summer in the boat. Well, in the summer we'll just wet wade and whatnot, but towards that fall and stuff, you don't want to be soaking wet and yeah, use these. These are also really nice when it's raining. These have made my top half or my bottom half completely dry compared to soaking wet. So these are really nice to have. Highly recommend a pair of stocking foot waders. They fold up really nice. Yeah, they look cool. Um, next up for other rain gear. This is Cody's rain jacket. Uh, not the Patagonia one. He's rocked this for the past two seasons. It's worked out pretty well. Nice and light, you can fit sweatshirts underneath. That's pretty key. So you can use it in the summer as well as late fall and or winter. Yeah, Cody really likes this. Um, but I'll be rocking this year. I didn't have a rain jacket last year. I had some cheap little Cabela's windbreaker that was waterproof according to them, but no, that was not waterproof. So I upgraded to a Sims Challenger jacket, uh, big enough where I can fit shit underneath it. And yeah, I don't know, I've used like Sims products all the time and everyone knows Sims like, you know, it's expensive, but it gets the job done. So yeah, I'm really excited to kind of test this thing out. I like how the hood, uh, there's more hanging out. So you're not getting really wet right here. It's, it's kind of more, you know, that hood goes out there. I like this feature because it zips up all the way right here when it's cold out or when you're wet. But yeah, no, I've worn this a couple times um, in the winter ice fishing and just kind of out and about doing stuff. And I really like the feel of it. So yeah, we'll be rocking with this this winter. 
Uh, another thing that we will bring if it's cold out during the winter are bibs. These are not Sims, these are clam ice bibs. Cody and I both ice fish, so we kind of use both for you know ice fishing and fly fishing and whatnot. But no, these are really nice for when it's cold. They're insulated and whatnot, as well as waterproof. So if it's raining, sleeting, or snowing, these will get the job done, as well as keep it really warm. You fit shit underneath it. And uh, yeah. So I just kind of went through all the fishing gear wise that we'll be rocking with this 2021 season and Cody's going to be going through kind of all the camera equipment that uh, we'll be running. So to start out, um, we're recording on the second camera, just decided I'm going to start using now. But to start out, we're going to go over the main camera, which is a Sony A7 Mark III. Um, right now we have a Sigma, the 35 millimeters, same ones that I've been using for a while. I've got another one, I'll talk about that in a sec. but. This is pretty much, I'm gonna be using this lens when we're, basically when we're not on the water. I remember we were just filming like little stuff and like just talking. Cause it's not really necessary to have a zoom lens when you're doing all that, when you're not doing all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so this camera shoots 4K, does slow-mo in 1080, 120 frames. So it's pretty much all I can ask for right now. It's really good, it's gotten me to where I want. And I also got a new mic, which is, I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a Sony and it goes through, I forget what this is called, but my mic, the slot broke on here. So I have to, uh, I had to get something different, so I had to get a little bit nicer mic, which is what I was planning on doing anyways, but it's good now that we have it, so. All right, so to move on from that, this is the uh, the Sony, no, it's a Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter, um, full length 2.8. Um, I really like it, it's been, it's done really good so far. I'm getting a couple, I wanna get a filter for it and stuff like that, but. Right now, it's really all I can ask for, especially for on the water. It's got that little bit of zoom, gets a 70 millimeter, so it's, it's a lot nicer than what we've had in the past where it's just been 35 the whole time. So I'm super excited to get on this and like film some fish with it. That would be awesome. But moving on from that, we have the same GoPro, it's a Hero 7. Um, I've, been, I've, I've been trying to work on getting the uh, GoPros kind of, they can look really bad or they can look okay. I've been trying to make the, the quality look okay. But to pair with the GoPro, we have two mounts. We have a chest mount, and then this is newer. It's the grip mount. We can put it on the side of the boat, or pretty much the side of anything. And I'm excited for this. We've used it a couple times. But yeah, um, and then we got three batteries and a charger for the GoPro, so nothing too crazy. So the second camera, it's got my old mic that we were using before. Um, I don't even know, I think it's an A67. It's a, it's a really old mirrorless, or it's a DSLR. It's an old DSLR Sony camera. It's not the nicest, but I'm just, I think having two cameras is going to be beneficial just because like, even if it doesn't look the greatest, it's going to be nice to have two cameras to, if something else has happened somewhere else, somebody takes this one or vice versa, we can get longer shots with this one. That's what I like about this one. It's got a 200 millimeter lens, it's 55 to 200 meter, millimeter. So that'll be nice. I'm excited for this. I'm excited to get different, more angles and stuff. As you can see, that's what we're using in this right now. But yeah, and then for tripods, I don't actually know the name of this one, but I got it when I got the lens. I got it in a package deal. And this tripod's like, it's really nice. It's got like everything. It's, it just feels really, really sturdy. It's the Alta Pro 263 AT. And I'm just, I'm really, I'm excited just to have a nice tripod that I can rely on. Cause the other one that I have, it's plastic and it, it broke like three times. And it's just like, so I've been, I've been wanting to shoot film a little bit more too. Um, so I got an old camera from my grandpa. The past, but this is a Yashica G. I don't even, it's just a nice little camera, nice little film camera. I, I really like the, the look and I like the way film feels. I feel like it's uh, sometimes when you're shooting pictures, especially like out in the water, when you're using like a, a new, it just feels too sharp, everything feels too crisp, and that's like, I don't know, when you're outdoors, it doesn't feel like everything should be like perfect because that's not really what it is out there. I don't know, maybe that's just me talking, but uh, I like shooting film now, and I've been doing that lately. We got this, this is the uh, this is a waterproof thing for all my SD cards, because I have quite a few, they're not in here right now, but I have like one in that camera, two for that camera, I got three for the GoPro, and then one for the drone, which I don't have the drone with me right now, but I thought I'd put that. I got a Mavic Mini, I'm looking to upgrade it, but Mavic Mini's nice, it's done its job. All I can really ask for. And then moving on to bags. This is a chest mount, whatever. Moving on to 
Moving on to bags, I have this, it's just a Sony camera, camera bag. It's nothing crazy, it's not like, but it, it's just the perfect size. It fits right in my backpack, which you'll see in a sec. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a backpack, or just a camera bag. It's nothing too crazy. There's, you can have sections in there, but I, don't, I honestly don't even keep my camera in there. I just like throw all my like, GoPro stuff. Uh, I like to have the camera on me at like, all times, pretty much. There's, there's never really a time where that camera's in the bag, to be honest, because it doesn't need to be. So there's always something to film. But moving on to backpacks. Um, this is a Eagle Creek backpack. I got it from my dad. And this thing's like, it's old. It's probably like 30, 25, 30 years old or something like that. But it's never done me any wrong. And I, I just like the look of it. It fits, it's, fits everything I need in it perfectly. I can usually, back when I was fishing, not fly fishing, I'd have like three different like cases of baits and all that, and then I'd have that, and then I'd be able to put like a sweatshirt, jacket, pretty much anything I need in here. So this is always, it's been perfect, it's a good size, and I don't have to buy a new one, so I'm going to not buy a new one. Um, and then moving on to the last bag, this is, the, this is a duffel bag. I usually bring this one and that. That's the two bags that I bring. North Face um, Base Camp Duffel. Right now it's got my camping stuff in it, but yeah, this is it's really, I mean, I think I've talked about it before, but I really like it. I like the look. It looks cool. Um, I like the yellow, and it's like obviously like water resistant as much as it can be. And yeah, I, I can fit enough for like a two week trip in here if I had to. Hasn't done me any wrong yet, so I'm gonna keep using it. All right, guys. So yeah, it's kind of the gear breakdown of all of our fishing uh, and tackle equipment and camera stuff. Not a lot, but we got what we need. Mm -hmm. It gets the job done, and uh, yeah, Southern Opener is coming up here in about two weeks. So yeah, roughly about a little less than two weeks by the time you guys will see this video. Uh, yeah, this 21, 2021 season uh, will be a good one. It's gonna be pretty big. Yeah, a lot of videos, a lot of stuff cranked out. Got a couple, a lot of big projects planned. So. Yeah, so big things uh, to look forward here for this season, and uh, good luck to everyone else who's going yeah. out. Yep, definitely. Shoot me a DM on Instagram or something. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Follow my fly tag. <laughs>